an agency plagued with scandal. I never got away from it. I got put in that home at four years old. I never got away from it. They didn't care. In reality, uh, DHS needs to be burned to the ground and then built it back up and start over again. And the victims are across the state of Oklahoma. We've lived in so much fear for so long um, of retaliation for standing up for our families and our kids. With a criminal investigation into the agency now ordered by state lawmakers just now getting underway. What we're seeing is the abuse of our criminal system, abuse of our court system. Now more than ever before, there are calls for change into the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. When we're telling the truth and we don't have truth listeners, but we're truth tellers, do not give up. And the calls transcend party lines, religious beliefs, and more. If we got it wrong, you know, God help us. We need to get those kids back to their parents. Now on Fox 23 News at 630, we bring you the stories of two more victims. I, my daughter would come home and just bawl and cry like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And you'll see why their lives are now part of a criminal investigation into the agency. We back with another episode of Community Convo <laughs> with your boy Uno C. <coughs> And my guy, <coughs> Akuno in the background, getting the recording right, keeping the recording tight for me. <coughs> Leave your feelings on the sideline, because shit about to get real. This is Community Convo Podcast, Toss Oklahoma 918, the real Black Wall Street, the original podcast. All you followers, follow along. We going to leave. Today on this episode, I want to talk about Oklahoma Department of Human Services. I done been through this. And the things that they be having going on <coughs> in Oklahoma, they feel like the woman, no matter how bad she's off, should have the child. They don't want to give men no kind of leeway, no kind of gratitude of getting their child back. But I did it. I walked the steps. I went through it. So lately on the news, there's been a lot of stuff going on about DHS, Oklahoma DHS being investigated from Tulsa to Oklahoma City, to these little country towns <coughs> with pedophilia, molestation, human trafficking. They doing it all. So I just want to talk about the things that they're not letting us see that I've been through with the court system of DHS. Through this, throughout this video, we're going to be going back to the video so it's going to be back and forth. It's like a reaction plus with my story. So in the beginning, I didn't know which one of my children, because when they send you a letter, they don't tell you the child name. They just put your child slash children. Somebody is in DHS custody. So they didn't tell me who it was. I had to run around to DHS out north, this Tulsa. They didn't know what was going on. I had to go to DHS downtown. And they took me on a wild goose chase. Finally found out it was my baby boy. Finally found out what had happened. That my baby mama, you know what I'm saying, had had another child and it was born with drugs in the system. So even though I didn't lose my child, even though I, it wasn't because of me, I wasn't the reason. And I had my own apartment, but no job. I had to get a job. I had to take these classes. I had to go through all these steps just to get my son back after he had been in DHS custody for like two years already. So with that being said, I ain't seen this news clip. I'm going to jump back into the clip, hear a little bit more of what they say, and then I'm going to elaborate on the things I went through with DHS and what I think and what I feel like they said. Because like the man said in the beginning, DHS needs to be burnt to the ground and rebuilt. And that's real. So can you take me back, baby, one more time to the video? Thanks for joining me at 630. I'm Rick Marinon. Tonight, we're speaking with more people who say they are victims of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services and their practices that they say are problematic, to say the least. We're going to be upfront with you. Some of this is very emotional, but it's important because you as the taxpayer paid for this system. We also want to warn you, there are details about abuse that might be too graphic for some viewers. Something else to keep in mind. DHS says it will not comment on individual cases. Our Devin Lyon is in studio to share their stories tonight. 
Now, we told you some of Alexis Frydenberg's story on Fox 23 News at 5. She spoke about suffering all types of abuse by her adopted family for over a decade. The court case for her brother, Sammy, also called Dan, is playing out in court still. But Alexis says her story shows failure upon failure by DHS. She says despite her cries for help, DHS continued to place her in the abusive home that she called a living nightmare. Here's some of our interview together. Um, I was four years old when I was placed with them. It was a living nightmare. Um, the abuse started shortly after that. I'm just going to be honest. I was eight years old with a gun to the back of my head by Dan, taking me out to our back pasture, telling me if I ever told anybody what happened to me, that I would end up missing like the two foster girls that were never found. So I got sent to go live with Dan and his wife in the middle of the night by my adopted parents after being assaulted by all of his kids because my mom had threw my head into a plywood wall. So that was when you were 17? This was when I was 14. I got sent to go live with him in the middle of the night, right the summer right before my freshman year of high school. Sent by your mom or sent by DHS? Sent by my adopted parents. And uh, what, did DHS ever find out about this? No, I don't think so. I don't think that they knew. It's something I've worked extremely hard in therapy on. I've, and I'm in intensive trauma therapy, not just from the sexual abuse, but the abuse I endured with DHS. You could call it a failure. You can call it whatever you want. That's abuse by our state. That's straight up abuse by our state. I don't care how, whatever way you want to look at it, it's abuse, such child abuse at the hands of our state, regardless. You're not investigating. You're putting us through more abuse than these foster homes are at the end of the day. I, would you call this a failure by DHS? Oh, absolutely. Why? Because. All right, I want to pause it right there. Check. So, this young lady was in foster care. She had. Physical abuse, mental abuse, all these things done to her. As a child, you think she didn't tell somebody in DHS? So, just like when I was going up there and trying to get my son back, I told the DHS worker, I said, because she was a black lady, when he finally got through about seven, eight DHS workers because they'll switch them out every 30 days on you so you can't keep up with them. This is how Oklahoma play a game. So I told him, I said, this is just like DOC to me. These Y'all giving my son to anybody, they can't control him. They putting him on all these different medicines, but they're not his real parent. So that's just like the police department down here shooting people down. It's the same thing. It's not getting investigated. DHS has not been getting investigated. TPD officers, when they kill people, innocent people with no weapons, they're not getting investigated. They sweep that shit under the rug and they keep it pushing. This is the number one Ku Klux Klan city, state. This, this is one of the biggest states where racism is still alive right in your face. No matter how you want to look at it, how they try to put it, how they try to sweeten it up, they use TPD, DOC, and DHS to make us feel like we need them. We should have our own DHS. We should have our own police. We should have our own government, to be honest. But since we don't, and since it's voting season, and all my people out here wants to vote for another human being instead of voting independent for themselves, and I ain't even a voter because I'm a felon, and I don't even be, be studying that shit. But if you just think about it, if you if you can if you got common sense, why would you put another person in power instead of being independent? So since we're not independent, we have DHS, Oklahoma DHS, we have Oklahoma DOC, we have all these things that these people have created to deteriorate us as a people, to water down our true selves 
for us to look in the mirror and want to be somebody else or want to try to do something else or whatever is not being brought up and when it is being brought up by these children in DHS custody that this is happening to them at these foster homes, they don't say nothing, bro. So that, that lady ain't the first one. She ain't the second one. She ain't going to be the last one to say that this has happened to me through the Department of Human Services that's supposed to be for the kids. They getting a check. The state is getting a check off of these children, just like the state is getting a check off inmates in prison and jail so you can roll the tape buddy because i don't want to you know me i get hot say that the next time you don't go get put in isn't going to be worse than the one you just got pulled out of that is our reality i can't i can't live my life dwelling on it i can't be angry i can't hate him i forgive him i don't forgive him for up. him i forgive him for myself because at the end of the day i will never be happy and i will continue to hold on to that anger if i can't forgive him so i forgive him for myself but i will never forget the things that happened to me in that family by anybody any of them i'm living my life and i am happy 28 years happy for the first time free the only the only worry i have is is DHS even going to really make a change? Is there even going to be a change? And that's messed up, bro. That's, 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 that's how they train them kids. That's what they tell them. Oh, you saying this about this family, but what if we send you somewhere else and it's worse? What the, what the fuck is that? What, how the fuck is y'all helping these people, bro? I didn't help more kids than y'all have, nigga. And I can start naming Curtis, Adriana, Selmyra, beautiful. All these little kids that stayed with me, bro. Like, nigga, I fucking fed these kids. I fuck with these kids. They know they safe around me and all that shit. They know I ain't gonna let nobody do nothing to them. And I ain't finna do no weirdo shit to them. And they can be comfortable and all that shit, bro. Like, I used to have 13 kids at this motherfucker. Because fuck DHS, nigga. Because they on some bullshit, bro. And that's what they tell them kids. It don't matter if you a little boy or a little girl. They let anybody get sexually abused they with this sex trafficking shit look at the juvenile detention this motherfucker on the investigation now dhs this shit been going on in oklahoma this is what they're into oh the preacher now the preacher shit came out now everything first the juvenile shit came out boom then this preacher boom now dhs bro look at this how this shit riding through look then everybody want to go to the church house so where's God in these kids' life that's with DHS and they took it away from their family and they were some people that they don't know they took a class to be a foster parent just because they're a freak? Hey, and I, then when know, a kid... I know I said I was going to stay silent, but I want to <laughs> like on some real shit, like I remember, I remember I was a teenager, bro. I remember going to McLean. I remember I got put out when I was we adolescent. Long story short, I ain't even going to that. But I was staying with the homie his mom, his sister, and they, and they stepdad or whatever, and his mom adopted one of his girlfriend's children. And in, in, in the process of that, uh, the girlfriend was staying with them. DHS ain't know she was staying with them, but uh, the mama had, the, the grandma, well, the homie mama had the children. And the homie used to beat up the girl. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say no names or nothing like that. But uh, the homie used to beat up the girl and the mama, his mama would tell the girl that if she didn't do certain things, she would tell DHS that she was violating her visiting or visitation uh, orders and, and certain other things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that shit messed up. And so I know that these situations with DHS and, and families, man, this shit is, 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 is fucked up. But speaking on the people who be adopting these children, some of these, these people, sick motherfuckers. they fucked up, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't going to, like I said, this is your show. I wasn't going to get into it, but I have a child. Look at this community convo. This community man. convo. I'm going to draw you in, baby, to this conversation. <laughs> like, that shit just, it, I feel for them children. Another example, bro, and I ain't going to put my business out there, but I got three younger brothers on my father's side who went through that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I hadn't seen them in 19 years. We just relinked maybe five years ago. And, and see, that should be crazy, bro. Like, that's what them people do. They'll get you, and then they separate <laughs> you from your people. That's like my, my son, little brother, 
I still talk to the foster parents. I let them come get my son and they take him with his brother and they go do stuff with them. And I let them come over here and all that because it ain't them kids' fault, bro. That some people be messed up. So, like, if I if they would have let me adopt them, I would have had them, bro. You like, they would have still been together. But at the same time, like the woman who it, the woman who it, took my brothers in, once she because all right, she started taking my siblings, my little brothers to uh Morton's Morton's clinic because the the state. And I want to make this clear nah, for everybody me, that don't know. Let me run this by you real quick. When the woman found out who my peoples was, because my cousin worked at the clinic. And so when she would check my my little brothers in, and she found out that she found out, hey, they're my little cousins. I I know they older brother, they daddy and yeah. mom type shit. The lady stopped bringing them to the clinic. Then, Took them somewhere else. Yeah, then she moves out of Oklahoma, moves to Texas, but she left two of the twins here by themselves when they were sixteen. Didn't even tell them she was leaving. You know what I'm saying? So, but what these people do though, they do it for the finances. Yeah, the money. I was just gonna say that's what I want everybody to know. If you don't ain't never been around DHS, ain't never been through it, ain't never heard about how they get down. They pay people to be foster parents. They pay these people. They give them food stamps and all that. On my soul, it's a business, and, I, and I'm a year with that. This show show tonight. I might jump back in, but yeah, this show show. But it's like they train these kids by scaring them and manipulating their mind and saying, well, what if the next family is worse? So they stay where they're getting abused at. They stay where the paperwork is easy at. They know what's going on because the child done told them. So then they paying the people to molest children, to abuse mentally, physically, spiritually, break down and abuse children, bro. So if that ain't human trafficking, and you paying a motherfucker. I don't know what it is. Everybody need to go to jail. To me. Because they call niggas like me a criminal. Or you, you a felon. What's the purpose of a background check? If they're not checking the officers. If like you ain't checking it. Like the one who killed Sonya. You know why they made a background check? Let me show you why they made a background check. You see that? You see that, you see that on? I already know. You see this T-shirt? Not, not, not the writing on the T-shirt. Do you see this T-shirt? They don't get a background check. They only made a background check for a black ground. It should be called a black ground check. I mean, they get their little, but I'm saying like as far as like people. Would, nah, they get a scan. They I'm get saying, a scan I'm saying, through. I'm saying, I'm, saying like DHS. I'm saying DHS. How you not know these people have these type of backgrounds? Bro, they be knowing. Some yeah. of them people was cancer. Some of them DHS workers. One of the homies. Everybody getting a cut of the money. One of the homies at work asked me the other day. He was like, "Bro, you ever donated?" And I was like, "Yeah, a long time ago." But they banned me talking about I got gang related tattoos. He said, "What?" I said, "Yeah, for, on some real shit, they banned me for life because of my tattoos." He said, "Man, that's bullshit." I said, "I said I, I know. You got Europeans that go in there with fucking skulls on, death shit, swapping kind of. You know what I'm saying? All kind of fucked up ass tattoos." And they go in there just to go get them a high, go shoot, shoot up in their body. But you know what I'm saying? Like they they look at us. Oh no, you can't you can't be here. You can't do it. Yeah, you an animal. You the scum of the earth. Like how you not know if, if, even with the pastor? Because I wasn't trying to get into that. We're gonna stay on well, that's part of DHS too, because I'm sure his daughter was reported. I'm sure that shit was reported. Look, bro. Look. That's wow. a part of the state. This is a state thing. This ain't just this Department of Human Services, but it's the state of Oklahoma, bro. It's the state thing. The pastors work for the state. They're state workers. So that's too. what I'm saying. So if he was working at a school and he was reported for touching the girls at the school, then his daughter, since she was a baby, I'd be damn, bro. I don't even like being that close to my daughter, bro. I'm not, I'm not that type. That shit weird to me, bro. That shit, that shit, nah, bro. If, if if you got to look at how many why we since we going to the school shit you got to look at how many teachers and shit and coaches and motherfuckers getting busted for fucking with them kids up there. I'm glad you just said that because you made me think about what I tagged you in the other day when I did show that. Yeah, seven hundred, so, seven hundred, seven hundred pastors in the last five years since 2019 have been convicted for touching on children. Or state and they and they. They all tied into the state, bro. 
they all so so it's like when when they have rallies and all that shit when they be running for an office governor chairperson all that shit city council they always have a what a religious what representative they always tied into some religion it don't matter if it's catholic charities or if it's this over here or that over there the churches is tied in with the states they're in bro all this shit is tied in together that's why churches give you what help they they give you they help you with bills they help you with rent if they can and all that shit where that money coming from people donating it to them so it's a non-profit all really, this shit is up under the you rarely see the churches don't give them to giving back to the community you know what i'm saying no nah, but i'm saying the black churches but they can go downtown and all that shit them people yeah. gonna give you some yeah, catholic yeah, charities yeah, always yeah, doing yeah. shit. Yeah, they did. So that's what I'm saying. Them is the people, the kind of people that they make. They invented the touching kids. They invented this shit. They been doing it. They got sent out of their own country, sent over here, y'all, wherever, go wherever the fuck y'all want to do. Just get up, get up from over here because y'all foul and y'all fucked up and we don't want y'all here. So they came over here and turned up, nigga. <laughs> shit. They was P. Diddy and before P. Diddy. They taught P. Diddy. Look at the old man he was under. Look at the fucking look at how this shit goes. So DHS is a state of Oklahoma. That whatever state it is, is there. That they are part of that state. They're state workers. That's what they call a DHS worker, a state worker. The police is what? State workers, city workers. They work for these motherfuckers, bro. They do, they killing motherfuckers getting away with it. They being freaky with motherfuckers and getting away with it. They child trafficking kids, the juvenile detention center, all up on investigation. All this shit is falling down, bro. Cat Williams said the 2024 gonna be that year. Now shit falling down. Bricks is rumbling and shaking. They don't know what to do. So now they gotta start telling on all their other homies, the little homies, the fall guys, because the big guys ain't they you ain't gonna hear about them. You ain't gonna hear about the motherfuckers in the governor's mansions and all that shit. But you think they ain't doing it? Nigga, they know about it. They having them P. Diddy parties. Probably got some of them DHS kids there. Shit. <laughs> On God. This shit don't, this shit ain't just P. Diddy in Hollywood. This shit is Oklahoma. This shit is the state. State workers, they all fucked up. They signed a creed, bro. Just like the police. Just like I told the DHS worker, I looked the black lady in her eyes and I said, I know it's certain things you can and cannot do because you signed to work for the state. She grew up on 5 4. My, went to school with my big sister. Know me and my brother. Kind of remember me because they way older than me. She 50 plus. So she know what the North Side is like in the 90s. She know what's going on. She know how it is. But she got this state job with these benefits, so she has to be a puppet. And that's what's been going on. They've been puppet mastering these people. And they can't say shit even though if they do want to help, or they got to lose their job. Like I told you, you can't help me like you want to because you'll lose your job. You won't have your benefits. You won't be getting your check every week or every two weeks. My little sister went, th went through this DHS shit with me and then got a job with these motherfuckers. A week or two later, she called me crying and said, I don't even know why I started working for these people because I went through this with you and my nephew and you just got them back in woo woo and my silly self then went and got a job at for the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. And she was crying because she hurt because she can't help them kids like she want them to. I mean, like she wants to. And she thought them people was going to be doing because now she's inside of the belly of the beast and she get to see the intestines and all the shit that they be doing and what's going on inside the motherfucking stomach of the belly of the beast. My little sister called me crying literally after she took a job with these people, bro. So it's like. You either gonna keep the job for the benefits and your check and bite your tongue or go find another job. And when you try to find another job and they call us for because you used to work here, we're gonna post out on your name because we're the state of Oklahoma and we'll make it where you can't get no job nowhere in this motherfucker. So it's a trick bag. It's a trick bag for for a sister or for a brother. 
working for the state. My stepdaddy worked for Lord E. Raider. And he used to tell me all the time in Sand Springs how it prejudiced these people. He used to break it down to me, bro. So when the white man, that's why when you showed me that snippet and the white man said, DHS needs to be burnt to the ground and rebuilt. And he ain't lying, bro. And it's a lot of people, that his people ain't didn't like that and they don't want to hear that shit. Because you're fucking up my money now. Now we're going to have to rebuild this shit. I'm going to have to fire these people, get some new people, raise the pay, do this, do that, go by these codes and guidelines that we've been breaking. So we can roll back to the footage because I don't even know what else they got to say, but I'm sure intrigued to hear. Families among thousands of stories. Sean Reed's story is one of those families state lawmakers point to. He sat down with me in an interview along with a friend and advocate of his to tell me Sean's story and the changes they're demanding. Do you believe DHS is lying about crimes against children? 100%. Do you believe they've lied in court about it? 100%. Sean Reed is just another parent coming forward, answering yes to those same questions. He told me the order for the OSBI to investigate DHS and his child's case is long overdue. I'm ready to see something happen. I've been waiting on this. Sean tells me DHS failed to acknowledge abuse claims against his child's biological mother. I mean, it's from... Oh, it's from uh, fingernail beds being cut and scraped with razors to try to get fingernail polish off because her stepmother and, and her stepsister all went and got their nails done together. Things like that. Coming and crying in your arms like, Daddy, my thumb hurts. My fingers hurt. You know, this not feeding me the same thing as she's feeding the other kids. You know, she comes home and cries about things like that. Um, she's been cussed. Her mother's cussed her several times over the phone. Teeth hurt. Having uh, uh, medical or dental procedures done at home illegally with stolen tools and parts from a dentist. She bawled for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes trying to tell me, show me she wanted to tell me something, and it took her 20 or 30 minutes to tell me. She being tickled in between her legs on her thighs, supposedly. Have they involved law enforcement to a proper extent in their investigations? No. Were they ever contacted? Law enforcement? Yeah. Um, I don't know the DHS has contacted them. Yeah. I highly doubt it. One of the allegations was my daughter being put in the shower with her stepdad. And the judge said it's just, that's poor parenting. Same thing with the chemical burns around her mouth that blistered her face all up. That was bad parenting. I, my daughter would come home and just bawl and cry like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. Daddy, why won't nobody believe me? Nobody believes, me, believes what I'm telling them. You should be able to promise things to your kids that are in your grasp, I guess. I promised my daughter that she wouldn't have to go back to her mom's. And uh, I don't know, four or five hours later, I had to drive home and tell her to pack her stuff. All because that judge called in to get me checked out for mental abuse for trying to help her. And I lied to her. That'll be my last promise that I can ever make to her. Man, that right, this shit right there is sick, bro, because... When my son was with the foster parents, he was with the same people that got his brother right now to this day. When they couldn't control my son, bro, they take him to the doctor, say something wrong with him. And DHS was allowing that shit. And they was putting him on medicine. They was switching medicines because they was trying to, they bought him over here one day. They, I said, they said, when he started having weekend visits, I mean, like hourly visits, two and three hour visits on the weekend. I, I saw the first weekend they drop him off. I'm like, uh, what time he be getting up? They like, he get up early about nine o'clock. He'll be up, woo, woo, and ready to go. I'm like, all right. So they get her about ten. So I'm like, you ate breakfast? He said, yeah. So I'm like, what's wrong? You sleepy? He like, nah. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna walk around and walk, and then walk to the park, and then walk back around. So before we even get all the way to the park, I'm just looking at him I'm like, you sure you ain't sleepy? He like, no. So I'm like, all right. So we walked to the park with nobody up there. Boom. So I let him. He did the monkey bar. Show me he could do the monkey bars. Did a couple pull-ups on the monkey bars. As soon as I seen my five-year-old son do eight pull-ups on the monkey bars, I just thought about penitent. Like, this some prison shit, bro. <laughs> like, who teaching this nigga how to do pull-ups on the monkey bars, bro? He been in DHS custody. Boom. We walk back around her. We outside for about 20, 30 minutes at the most. We walk back around her. It's hot outside. I said, you want something to drink? Yeah, boom. 
We come in, he sit on the couch. I go in there to get him a bottle of water. I come in here, he passed out the medicine. Boom. Next thing I know, the next month, he on some different medicine. Then they changed it again, two or three weeks later. And DHS just allowing this shit. So I'm telling the DHS worker, I'm like, bro, I feel like they guinea pig in my son now, bro. They just trying to find anything they can do and give him just so he, because they don't want to deal with him. Cause he he bad, to them he bad. You know what I'm saying? Like they, cause they these people has never had a child in their life. They they the opposite color of us. They probably the only child. Oh no, I think one of them got some siblings. Cause when they they all come together, but they never had a child in their life. Then you give them some black children that you know they might have some problems. So then y'all allowed him to just drug him up, drug him up, drug him up, switch, drug, switch, switch. By the time he got with my sister, he was on some other medicines. So I would look the shit up. And one of them was like a heart, a high blood pressure medicine. It was a yellow pill. But then my mom would say, well, they say some of that stuff couldn't work because she went to school for medical coding and all that shit. So she like, they say now some of that stuff can work when with this for this or that or ADHD and all this type of shit. I'm like, how I know that shit ain't giving my son all these different medicines they've been switching my son on ain't fucked his chemical imbalance up in his body. Hey, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's why I was letting you get that out. But when I heard you say bad, you know, I always got to share some information with you. And I also want to talk about what the dad was saying with what his child, what, what his daughter was coming to him about. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a daughter born and I ain't going to speak on my situation because I don't you know what I'm saying, but a lot of people are afraid to go to DHS because of situations like what's going on with these children. Because they know, all right, it's already messed up. They're dealing with the abuse, whether it's at their mom or their dads. But then if you put them in a the system, it's going to be worse. It's possibilities of worse or abuse. Don't be worse because you know why? They're not paying to these people. If, your, if, if a relative don't get them, because they do relatives, if a relative don't get them, the next part that ain't they blood. They don't care about these people, bro. That's what I'm saying. Nine times out of ten is for the money, bro. Nine times out of ten, like the you got to look at how high the cost of living and shit is. Everything is going up. I mean, the birth certificate so, awards, but I want I also so, I, want, I want to let you I want to let you finish your story, but but like the, but like the man said, like the white dude said, he his daughter said. They feeding me different things than they feeding the other girls. You see what I'm saying? I already they know. treating her like they treating her like they getting the money from having being having her or whatever with her, and he getting his business. But they get, and he ain't getting nothing from it. But they getting something from it. But they treating her like she the bottom of the barrel and spending the rest of the bread on these other kids. That shit messed that up. That shit crazy, bro. But I wonder, uh, because I know you said how they had your son on different medication because they were trying to say he was bad. Yeah. Always, always. Because they couldn't control him. Because they couldn't control him. So to them, if they don't know how to control or or correct a child. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. You know, I always like to pop up the knowledge. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got to go to the etymology. You know, if I don't go nowhere else, let's go to the origin of the word. Let's, 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 Let's 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 find out what this word bad I means. How, how they how they classify our children is bad. Thirteen hundreds, right? That's where it came from. Thirteen yeah. late for all right. So in thirteen hundreds, it meant inadequate, unsatisfactory, worthless, unfortunate. Late fourteen century, so about fifteen hundreds, it meant wicked, evil, vicious, counterfeit. And so bad means evil. So when they say your children are bad, they're saying they're evil. Rare before 1400s and, and evil. 1700, the ordinary at antithesis of good. So it's the opposite. The opposite of good, bad, evil. And so that's that's it. That's it. But if we don't know, then we don't know. And so when they so put it's like, these spells on us, bruh, 
DHS is a fucking DHS. All right, let's go. Right, let's go. My bad. You pull me back in. I got to drop some jewels. I got to drop some jewels. The Black Code of 1724, the Black Christian Codes, is the DHS policies. The Black Christian Codes is the concept of the policy and forces known as police officers. Because like you said, they work for the city, they work for the corporations. Their policy and they enforce the policies of those corporations. Their policy and yeah. You know what I'm saying? When they really supposed to work for the, they really supposed to work for the people, me, you, and whoever else. But they don't. They work for the policy. They but push the they, policy. But when the people are corporations, see, you're gonna make me pull up some law. You're gonna make me pull up some law. But then we going we going to the whole group of subject. We can stay on this DHS thing. It don't even matter to me. This community convo. We can keep it real. We can, it's whatever. But. The more we know, the better, the more we can improve our people and what's going on around us. Like last night, I'm watching the video of uh, one of the guys behind the counter pranking the youngsters at the Chicago uh, gas station. He asking them, Kamala or Trump? <clears throat> and of course, all of the youngsters is saying, Trump, 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 fool, Trump, fool on BD, Trump, Trump, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll do be like, nah, you tripping, Kamala. He, he pranking them, but they, i shoot your store up. Why I blow you up? Y'all ready to die? And he first he was asking why y'all choose Trump, and they was like he giving us them stimulus checks. That's black folk reason for liking Trump stimulus checks. That's a poor reason for liking the most. Yeah, you know, you know they say he give out free money. That's why he did that, bro, for the black community to adapt to him. He said, "I give y'all this money," but they say America is in debt, but they print their own money, but he giving away money. Which ain't shit. It's really fucking paper. Real currency is gold and silver. Yeah, tell me give you a, tell me give you a couple pounds of gold. You know what I'm saying? Give me some 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 aluminum. Give me something I can I can actually make some value. Some diamonds. Some yeah. some Sierra Leone diamonds. But they ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? They got the people fooled with this illusion, and that's why I'm saying the manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. Those who control the language control those who must use it. That's a, a quote by Philip K. Dick. But I'm gonna always say that. But that we kind of jumping off the subject. But yeah, man, like I don't know how much left in that video. Let me check it out. Shit, sure, you can get we can jump back into that right quick. The story almost done shit with this video. <laughs> nah, I bet. Would look like and mean for him. On my personal case, I mean I I believe that my daughter's went through enough abuse where she's been. With her mother, and I think I would like to see her home. Um, with DHS, I'd like to see them completely gone, but we have to have some kind of system to do it. They need to, I think, clean it out and start over. I think they need to hand select everyone from the top to the bottom. Um, the first thing I would, if, if I was to take over DHS and run the whole thing, I would go back and probably hire every single employee that's been fired because those are the good ones. More families and private investigators continue to reach out to me about their family's struggles with DHS and problems they have with the current system. I will continue to gather and share their stories with you while work to change the agency gets underway in Oklahoma City. Live in studio, covering news that matters. Devin Lyon, Fox 23 News. Well, hell. Shit, man, they talking about... <coughs> If they can run D, if they run DHS, but talking about hand picking motherfuckers from the bottom to the top, it's like you gotta understand how many children is in DHS custody. It's the second biggest thing next to the penitentiary system here that's getting people paid. You know what's crazy is I remember <clears throat> they said they had over five thousand children in DHS custody. Bro, I'm, that's the second biggest. Livestock ain't shit in Oklahoma no more. The little oil they got here ain't shit no more. That's why they got so many prisons and so many children in DHS. Human trafficking is the biggest business in the world, bro. Let me see. No matter where the fuck you go, they kidnapping motherfuckers everywhere. Human trafficking is the biggest business in the motherfucking world because they got people that buy organs on the black market. 
So some people be kidnapping people and all that shit to sell their organs and kill them and all that shit. Like when you go in different countries, you got to tell motherfuckers you sick with HIV and shit. So they won't, because you don't know what they asking you. Is you healthy, bro? People are asking you that shit. Is you healthy? And you got to start playing like you coughing and shit and you sick. <laughs> you got to do that type of shit. Because if you don't, 6,500 children, bro. Oklahoma City. That, that's, that's the capital. They talk, they telling you. How many and it's probably and you know they they be cheating on the numbers just like they did with the race it's like 65, but it's, it's really over 6,500 are in the custody of the states and 450 are waiting on loving homes. Getting the latest <laughs> news stories of interesting by clicking okay, yeah, boom. But this was last year's report. Yeah, so you know it's more than that now. Look how many people dying of fentanyl and suicide, COVID. All that type of shit. So it's like they they'll make a male believe DHS, the state of Oklahoma, will make a male believe because he been to prison. He a known gang banger, ex gang banger, whatever. That you cannot get your children out of state custody. You can do anything you want to fucking do if you put your mind to it and you say. I'm nigga, if I got to quit smoking tree, if I got to quit doing whatever I'm doing to get my seed, to get my child, I don't give a damn if you, if you want to be a transgender. Don't ever let the state of Oklahoma tell you that you not fit to get your child because you was gang banging, because you done been to prison twice, because you got a murder case, because all that. Jaquay. Because I'm finna show y'all that my son, he home, he been home, and I did it. This is my son that was in DHS custody, right here. And he been home, bro. But he was in DHS custody, you can go back in there. He was in DHS custody for five years, like a prison sentence. And they kept giving my baby mama chance after chance after chance, and she kept getting dirty ways, and she kept choosing to do what she was choosing over the children, bro. So I had to get a job, even though it's a bullshit job, because I have been in prison twice, once for murder, the second time for a banger. So it's like, I still got my son, though. I ain't an active gang member, but people in the town, they know where I'm from. They know what I done did. Niggas know me. Niggas know what I done did. I got respect in the streets. I got little niggas from every other set. Not even my set, bro, because I ain't even active like that. I got a nigga, a nigga called me FaceTime the other day. He from blood. Like, I see you be going off on the internet tripping and all that. But like I told him, I just be doing that shit because niggas be talking shit because I'm still in slides right now to this day. I wear slides everywhere I go, bro, because I'm comfortable. I ain't worried about nothing. I don't be out here doing shit or causing no problems with nobody. I'm trying to help the people elevate with my partner, I'm trying to put the information out there, I'm trying to let y'all see how the state work, how the city work, how they use our people to work against us because they sign the paper to have a job. And they know if they don't want to do that job that they sign up for, for the state, they can make it where they don't get a job in this state. Oh, no, again. And that shit is real. Because it's ties like that. It's levels to this shit. So a lot of these guys out here that went from the streets to the pool pit, I don't even trust y'all. Especially in Oklahoma. I'm going to just keep it all the way a dollar. Because Oklahoma is fucked up. And I done been around. Like Tupac, I get around. But anyway, but with that being said, don't ever let the state of Oklahoma, if you stay in Oklahoma, tell you because you got a felon, because you used to do this, because your background say that, because this, that, and the other, you cannot achieve the goal of getting your own child, your seed, out of their custody. Because I did it. It might have took a minute, but it, had, it got done. Especially if you have an Indian card. Because ICWA gets involved. So that's a free game for y'all. And this is the wrap up of this session of Community Convo. Hey, real quick, Oklahoma. Those, I just want to add on for those who don't know that the whole origin of DHS came in 1936. You can look this up yourself. And it was used after the Great Depression because before the Great Depression, we must remember our people had everything on our own. We didn't need shit from them. We was we had our so-called black family. We had our structures. We had mother, father in the home. We may have had eight, nine, ten children. It didn't matter. We had a big family structure. Everybody was together. All the yeah. cousins all locked in. You know what I'm saying? But then 
after the grand reunion. You know what I'm saying? We had, you know what I'm saying? We had a structure, but yeah, uh, during the Great Depression, 1930s, so in 1936, Oklahoma, uh, DHS came became a, a corporation, and so that's how they used that. Like in my video, check the video I did in the 60s, uh, about the suffrage movement, the Women's Act. You know what I'm saying? I have it up here for the show. But anyway, uh, I'm let you go ahead and close, my brother. Oh, uh, no, nah, that was good. You stopped me, though, because shit. I didn't even know that, though. So, I mean, y'all can come to the channel, bro, helping our people elevate, get some free game, baby. We ain't charging nobody. All we ask for is a like, a comment. Let us know. Let us know what's cracking if y'all want what y'all want to hear. If y'all from the town, oh, uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. We had a person that was in the group in the part of the podcast and was always saying, "What well, these people locked up saying this and that and that, that they need help and they need help and woo woo woo." But there's kids out here that need help. And but these people, if they reaching out, if y'all was reaching out to that person, yeah, if y'all was watching the podcast, y'all know who y'all is. That person know who they is. Tap in on the comment, bro. Send bro a message. Do something else, bro. We'll talk about it. We'll get on here. If you got a story you want to share, you you wrongfully convicted. You already seen bro already did an in, interview with one of his partners. We'll put it out there for the world to see, bro. But if you just back on the background talking and saying this and saying that, shit, that's where it's going to stay. on In the background, on the back burner. And with that, leave your feelings on the sideline. Shit, stay real over here. Community Convo, Greenwood, the real Black Wall Street, Toss, Oklahoma, 918. We out.